let's spend some time trying and understanding the FPGA board development board that we are going to use and um, just so that you appreciate the concepts that we just went over okay so what you see here is the development board the FPGA development board and let me pull the power plug on it just so that you know things don't shine in our face so it is called well okay uh, let me just put it here and maybe go to scribbling on the screen so the oh wow okay the board that this is is icebreaker um, it is based on the let me let me get a good color here nice okay so icebreaker v 1.0 e that is the version of this board and then the actual fpga is here so this is the fpga chips uh, chip and then what you see here the inputs and outputs they are connected to this chip the the wires that are coming out from here are the ones that are going on all of these sides so the inputs and the outputs of our circuits will be fetched from and dumped to these ports okay then what are the different things now available so there are a few buttons available for us there are a few leds uh, these are essentially you know exposed points we can hook wire here and then con connect it to some other circuit and control it um, then what else we have this i believe is the power supply chip most likely which is managing the board power there's a button here there are two leds right here and then um, uh, what else i think these are also related to power um, then this one right here is the FTDI chip and what it does is it takes the inputs in the form of USB and then uh, talks to the FPGA and there are like few lines dedicated to programming the FPGA. So this chip then uh, helps us go and program the memory within the FPGA and it is very likely also that this actually is not power um, power control related circuit but it is rather uh, SRAM or something of that nature memory external memory which retains the data related to the programming of the wires between various blocks in the FPGA all right so this is then the board and then um, what I also wanted to show you will also let me just kind of plug this in uh, when I plug it in you know some there's like some already pre-existing program on this which you know turns these different leds on and uh, well you know the buttons i don't think are mapped onto anything right now uh, fair but this is then what we will program and we will use the inputs and the outputs uh, to essentially you know deploy our circuit or check our circuit okay so let me then get this on the side right so you can go uh, and look up just look for icebreaker and then just type github because it's an open design uh, you know look for this icebreaker fpga or go for icebreaker whichever you know um, so if you go for the icebreaker hyphen fpga repository uh, you'll notice in the readme that there are a lot of uh, you know details provided and then we now then look at you know well there is a nice little picture at the bottom here that explains uh, right so this win win bond uh, this is a memory chip so this here it is using lattice ice 40 up5k uh, we'll take a look at what that is FTDI chip uh, and what else so they are also then showing us how different things are mapped so for example the red led that is right here that is mapped onto port 2 7 meaning port 2 pin 7 something of that nature and this becomes handy later on the reason to that is when we look at the internals or you know the io numbering of the fpga um, uh, we'll we'll know that okay pin 2 7 if we want to use that as an output or oh, that is connected to led one red led one right so it, it will come in handy later on so this is like a nice diagram that explains as to what pin is you know routed where and things of those nature and what else so 
yeah, then this is, you know, like a, another uh, idea in terms of, okay, there is an FPGA here, there are eight GPIOs exposed, and there is like, you know, a few other exposed to another uh, board on the side here. By the way, I should also show you this, that this can be removed, right? This can be removed. So it's essentially a break off board, and then I can plug that break off board, you know, back in. All right. Cool. So let's go ahead and explore a little bit more in terms of what that FPGA is. So let me just copy this and look for just Google search for that. Right. So this is then that FPGA. And what I'm looking for is the documentation uh, because that's going to be an interesting one. So Ultra Plus, uh, we are looking at uh, 5K, Ultra Plus 5K. Uh, sure, let's just go for this. Mm, what I'm interested in is finding a document because within that document will, will be some, okay, we don't care about all of this. Data sheet, yes. Uh, is this SG48I? Do we care about that? I don't know. Let's see. Uh, yes, SG48. So then we are looking for SG48. Let's click on that. So the data sheet is downloaded. Uh, I will uh, open it up. Right now, this data sheet here has a lot of details in terms of you know the architecture of the FPGA, the internal contents, and all of that. Most of which we don't care. I'm only interested in showing you that how the FPGA internally is. And let me minimize this. Right, so you can you can notice that there are there is a lot going on in that FPGA. It's not simply the AND gates. People have evolved, you know, beyond that. So there will be something called LUTs, lookup tables, and they will feed into something called a flip-flop, then there is like a marks, and things are implemented as logic cells inside the FPGA. And logic cells have the gates and all of that. So it's a little inefficient in terms of how it connects. And the inefficiency, um, uh, well, it's again a trade-off between do you want so many gates, and if you have so many gates, well, then the connection metrics is going to be too complicated. So what we then tend to do is, we meaning the engineers here, the implementation of an FPGA is based on this idea that, hey, if I have to implement, let's say an AND gate, then what I have is, uh, you know, A and B as the input and O as the output. So zero, zero, the output is zero, zero, one, the output is zero, one, zero, the output is zero, one, one, the output is one. Now, what if, I just took the outputs and put a mux here and hooked my inputs. So inside of the FPGA then, what if I just retained the truth table for the gate that I was trying to implement and then based on whatever my inputs are, I just pick a value. If both of them are zero, then I pick this value and route it on the output. And again, this is called like the MUX multiplexer. We'll talk about that when we come to talking about primitives. But the idea is that, hey, instead of implementing the actual gate combination, the transistor connections, what if we just store the truth table? This is called the truth table, by the way. And what if we just store that and, you know, output the value by looking into the truth, truth table? So something of that nature, various different combinations uh, you know and uh, engineering smartness has been put into designing fpgas and at the at the heart of it all is this idea of lut look up table and that is exactly what i was showing here but uh, the lookup table and then it's kind of you know based on whatever the input values are uh, the lookup table decides on a value and then passes in it to a d flip flop which can retain or store that value Again, the details are not important. What I wanted to convey was, yes, it is a sea of gates, but those gates are not all of them unconnected. Few of them are connected to implement, you know, some basic primitive logic that is then used to implement the function. Anyways, so that's like, you know, the internal details of an FPGA and you can you know, dive in and then understand what all other features FPGAs have. But long story short, the lattice, um, uh, lattice ICE40UP5K, 
uh, is the FPGA that we are going to use as a result of it being on this board. All right, and uh, the the so looks like there is a QSPI DDR, and uh, they have selected the wind bond, uh, whatever this uh, chip. So then let's go ahead and talk a little bit about that. So that memory chip is available right here at the bottom. And these are then the power, the regulators, right? And so, yeah, this is a diagram that diagram or a visual we'll refer to quite often. And um, well, if you want to read about the memory chip, 100 pages, that's available here, how it stores data and things of that nature. And that's about it. I think with this, hopefully I've convinced you that, you know, um, what an FPGA is, why we care and how we can deploy our digital circuits. Starting next section, we'll dive into actually creating circuits and deploying them on FPGA. All right, with this, I'll see you in the next one.